Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack, today is November 4th, and today's episode is going to talk about new lows in prices. We're going to talk about the RETH peg and how that's doing after Friday's DPEG. We're also going to be talking about a new um, Uniswap pool for RPL X RPL and a whole lot more. So let's get started. 10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. So I've got a quick episode for you all today, um, and it's going to start off with this horrible news right here. And this is that there's a new all-time low on the ratio for RPL to ETH. And um, this actually hit a bunch of times over the weekend, over the last few days, where we just hit new lows. Um, so uh, Ramana has updated it a bunch of times. And the current low now is um, actually, I think, even lower than the one I have here on the screen. Um, let's actually go and work it out together. So um, the current low is 0 0.00377-3218. So um, that was updated today. Um, the current price, uh, low price in USD has not been updated since September the 7th. So we are still a little bit away from that, but not much away from that. As you can see, the RPL price right now is around $9.15. And the the uh, ratio of costs, you know, is, is with those new lows. So um, it's not much of a move really to get down to those lows for the RPL price as well. But um, yeah, it's been it's been a bad weekend. And um, you know, let's actually just have a look at what the markets look like wider, so you can actually get a better idea. Yeah. So here, you know, you can see the market cap is down overall, um, and the seven day numbers here for. A lot of a lot of cryptos are like down bad. Actually, let's have a look at RPL first, and then we can um, compare it to the others. Okay, so looking at the RPL price here, you can see that you know it's nine dollars eighteen cents, and the one week price is down ten point three percent. So that of course is down against the ETH because um, you know against the ETH it's not it's not having a good time. But if we have a look at the wider crypto market, you know ETH is down about three percent. But other things like Solana is down like 9%. And here, you know, as you go further and further down, Avalanche is down more than 10%. Uh, you get things like Near Protocol that are down like 13%. Uh, BitTensor down 17%. Um, Casper down 11%. And then a whole bunch of them like here, Stacks, Dog with Hat, uh, Aave, um, Immutable X, Celestia, uh, Optimism, uh, Render, Injective, like the further you get down from you know the top of the top 100 more and more tokens are down like really badly over the course of the last week so um you know it it feels bad like i'm not saying that you know this is a good thing this does feel really really bad but um it's not like you know rpl is moving um outside of you know tandem with other tokens um other tokens have moved down as well. Not all of them, you know, admittedly, um, but, um, you know, RPL definitely isn't like the worst performer in the last week, but it's definitely not performing well either. Okay, and I know Pateris is going to love me for sharing this, but uh, this is um, a tweet from Benjamin Cowan, who has a YouTube channel called Into the Cryptoverse. Now, Ben has gained a lot of popularity recently because he's, well, he's been, he's a very popular YouTuber anyway, has like a million subscribers. But um, the reason why, you know, people are paying attention to him recently is because some of his predictions about ETH price going down have, um, you know, hit their targets. And um, his ideas on Bitcoin dominance have hit their targets. His ideas on altcoins getting decimated against Bitcoin and their ratios have kind of hit their targets as well. And now he's saying that the, this is the final reckoning of the altcoin, um, you know, um, collapse. And um, he says that, like, we're in our final leg now and the altcoins should bottom uh, within the next couple of months or, like, within the next month or two months, pretty much at most. This is a long journey and many give up along the way, but this is a process is always going to play out. Now, I'm not saying that Ben is some kind of, like, profit or anything like that. Of course I'm not. But, um, like, I... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what point to be making here without sounding like, you know, I'm agreeing with the TA. Like, I'm not agreeing with the TA because TA, I think, is like, you know, tea leaves for crypto bros. But um, the fact is that, like, you know, the altcoin market as a whole is doing quite poorly in the face of Bitcoin's, like, unrelenting dominance. And, um, 
that's that's kind of where we stand right now. So I think what you know Ben is saying here is that don't be surprised if um, you know we don't get another move down um, for alts against BTC and maybe even against ETH in the next you know this little short period that's coming up next. So um, yeah, like I'm not saying that you know RPL is at the bottom or anything like that. I'm not calling the bottom, but um, it might be the case that you know it gets more difficult before it gets easier. So definitely keep that in mind something that's gotten a bit better is the our eth peg so on uh, friday's episode we talked about how rpl had depeg sorry our eth peg i'm sorry um had depegged almost one percent i think it was 0.88 um, percent um by the time i was recording on friday and since then um, a couple of things have happened that have um, made it that we are almost back at peg or closer to peg than we were and that is um there's been some um burning of our ETH happening um that's kind of um helped fix that um and it looks like you know there was a whole a bunch of burning going on over here um and this is supposedly one of the reasons why we are moving closer back to peg although i thought that if people were either burning the ARI, sorry, so they were putting it back into the deposit pool instead of selling it in the secondary market. And what was happening was that they were putting it back in the deposit pool and then it was getting arbed by the bots who were then um, buying ETH on the secondary market to burn it out of the deposit pool. So that's how it was getting back to peg. And another thing that happened here was as Mike showed up, he says, someone please figure out this mystery. Are these 0.52 ETH distributions? So what was happening is there were a whole bunch of these um these distributions happening and um you know point point five two ETH it seemed like almost all of those were and um the idea was that you know calling distributions on mini pool contracts is permissionless in the rocky pool protocol so if there are validators out there who haven't distributed their rewards in a while then someone a third party can go there and distribute those rewards for that person now the way that works is um you know that part that belongs to the re holders will go back to the deposit pool um and the per, the part that belongs to the node operator will like kind of remain as a credit for that node operator but uh because this happened so many times i think what happened is the bots kind of figured out that you could do this you could arb you could call distribute and then use that transaction to kind of arb the eth that comes into the deposit pool uh where you um you know buy the re in the secondary market and then burn it into that uh, space that gets created in the deposit pool so these things together really did help the the um the price get back and so much so that you know uh, a couple of hours ago we were less than 0.1 percent of a discount which is absolutely within tolerable ranges it's not ideal you know ideally we've been used to having a premium for so long that it feels kind of weird that you know we have a little bit of a discount but um the discount is literally between uh, 1.1199 on the primary market and on the secondary market is 1.1189 um, so um it's less than you know like a cent if you were, if those values were dollars um comparatively so it's really really small amount that it's off um you know less than a tenth of a percent basically so um with that in mind like you know um what we really do need is um eth to come into the protocol and that's that's what we're waiting for um if we have a look at the if we have a look at the deposit pool right now you know um there's 229 mini pools that are waiting they're in the queue um that to clear those 229 validators we would need 7074 eth to come into the deposit pool to mint our eth uh, in total we have space now for 25,000 eth in the deposit pool so that position is not great um in all honesty but um that's that's just where we are right now you know there were some deposits that did come in over the weekend but um, there were not um, anywhere near the amounts that, you know, we want or that we want to be seeing. And um, I think there's like some low key panic in some people in the community. Um, and I think the idea is that, you know, the state, the natural state of a rocket pool for so long has been that there's no space in the deposit pool. And when there has been space, you know, in the last year, it's gone eaten up quite quickly. So I think people just didn't know that you could actually just mint our ETH from the, from the, deposit pool directly and now the idea is that you know um 
it might take a little bit of time for those ideas to kind of permeate through the wider community so people know that um that ETH is is you know it's available there for you to mint so um hopefully we'll start seeing some big R ETH mints coming in soon uh, but like like I said over here you know we need 7000 ETH just to clear the queues um and um hopefully that'll come soon Okay, here we've got news of a brand new um, liquidity pool on Uniswap. And this is an RPL, XRPL pool. Um, it's charging a fee of 0.3%. And um, there's liquidity already. There it has 12,082 RPL worth of liquidity and 20,000 XRPL worth of liquidity. It's a brand new pool, so it hasn't actually earned any, any fees yet. But um, here there's some mint prices, minimum mint price and maximum mint price. So uh, there's a range basically that this is in. And um, zero, that's 0 0.97 on the bottom side and 0 0.049 on the top side. So as long as it's within that ratio, that's where the, the most liquidity is. And as far as I know, this pool was actually set up by Marceau. But I'm not 100% sure. I think that's that's what it looked like from the node set Discord because people were asking, like, you know, are we going to have this pool in the um, in the short term? And Nick replied by saying, yeah, this is literally going to be spun up today. And then Marceau is the one who posted the link for it. And Nick said, well, here it is. So um, I think it was Marceau who set up this pool and put the liquidity in there um, for people who want to trade back and forth between RPL and XRPL there. Okay, moving on to some staking news now, and this is staking news from the Beacon Chain .eth. Uh, so the Beacon Chain project, which is um, a dashboard for viewing your validator activity and how it's all looking. So their uh, version two that I've talked about Rocket Fuel a bunch of times, their version two is now uh, ready to go. And um, they said monitoring your validator should be simple, and now it is. So they have real time monitoring of up to hundred thousand validators. You create custom validator groups, new metrics like validator efficiency, new notification system, and new subscriptions. And then there's a link to that as well. Uh, so you can go and play around with it. But they said that you can group your validators in different ways. You can, um, there's new, uh, the new metric validator efficiency me measures validator performance um, and it integrates multiple components uh, such as attestations, block proposals, syncs committees. It's waiting is based on the consensus layer spec and then they've got a detailed breakdown of rewards um, and then they've got a whole lot more as well so uh, they want to thank their premium subscribers for making it worth it and with version 2 they've got new subscriptions based on new features and as a result we've grandfathered in all existing version 1 subscribers so um, this is a really really cool uh, tool it's a tool that I use all the time their notification system has saved me on many occasions to get my validators back up and running when I've had issues with that. So great job, Beacon Chain, great job to the team there, including Butter and Invis, who are, of course, part of the Rocket Pool community. Okay, next, going back to the Rocket Pool Discord here, we've got uh, some more information here and patches found this. So when you click on the settings of a dashboard, you can see something called Rocket Pool Mode um, and it's a it's a option that's nearly finished but it hasn't finished yet and then um here um patches was kind of sharing information of what what it looks like and you know the online validators and what they're doing and different um and different um on groupings that he's done so he's got some of his own validators some node set validators and the performance of the whole thing um and it seems like notes that actually validators have missed one um they've missed one proposal so far so that's interesting but um yeah otherwise it's, it's all looking pretty good so um i can't wait to start playing around with it and like learning more about it and figuring out all these new features because um, i really do think that uh, beacon chain is you know a huge asset to the, the crypto com ethereum community as a whole so congratulations on this Okay, we're going to end today's episode with um, the raffle for October. So um, I got the information from Cheers a couple of days ago and we are ready to share it now. So this month was actually a really good month in terms of contributors. We had about 40 people contributing, which was fantastic to see. Um, Sneaky Ninja Guy was back to number one with 40 submissions. We had Shifrin, me, Samus, uh, Meg, Blue AVM, Halulilo, um, Joe and Jasper bringing up the top 10. 
And after that, we had Mambo San, who um, is back after a while being away, which was absolutely wonderful to see because he used to be my number one contributor for quite a while, um, or one of the top ones at least. And then um, there's a long tail of people with just one or two submissions as well. So, as always, what I'm going to do is copy this text from here um, and I'm going to put it in um, this tool that Hodge, uh, sorry, Hippocrates made for me. Um, and then we can, we're going to run it. But um, I, I need to fix Halulu's name as always because he there's some formatting issue there. So when I press go, it's going to spit out 10 names to me. One of those prizes is going to go to Cheers automatically. So there's nine prizes. My name will probably come out because I've got so many tickets. So that's going to go out and then that will be replaced by the next person in line. So I won't be getting a prize, of course. So let's have a look. So Sneaky Ninja guy number one, Mambos at number two. Good job. Patches number three. Patches' his money is actually going to go to Snow with the arrangement that they've had there then joe number four shifrin number five chaos number six and um, invis number seven samus number eight not you uh number nine and dukey number ten so um, i know that i'm behind on prizes i didn't distribute the prizes from last month yet so i'll get all those prizes out to you guys asap but uh congratulations to the winners of this raffle um yeah good stuff um as you can see patches his name is hidden but yeah sneaky mambo patches um Joe, Shifrin, Chaos, Invisible Symbol, Samus, Not You, Dukey. So, oh, I actually didn't win the raffle this time. So, um, I think Dukey misses out on that. So, sorry about that. But, um, yeah, congratulations on winning the raffle. I'll have those prizes out to you soon. And um, thank you, everyone who contributed. Like, Rocket Fuel wouldn't be possible without your help. So, please keep it up. Uh, and on that note, I'm going to end today's episode. So thank you all for watching, listening, and being part of the Rocket Fuel community. I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. Um, please be nice to each other <laughs> during the next 48 or 72 hours. I think in the US things might get a bit tense, but hopefully everything will be okay. Anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow. Um, have a good day. Bye.